Welcome to the Unit 4 Talking Point for 21st Century Teaching Short Course. I hope you have enjoyed your time till now. Um, in this particular unit, we will be looking at um, future of education uh, and pro doing some of future gazing as well. Um, why is it important, future gazing? I think certainly for educational establishment and learning providers and the uh, practitioner, it is very important because the, the amount of changes that are happening within technology um, and also the educational sector these days is that we need to keep an eye on what's around the horizon, what's coming up in future as well. Um, there was a report a couple of years ago by the Institute of Public Policy Research which said that established universities will go out of business unless they uh, adopt to the change of technology, globalization, funding changes and so forth as well. It's very interesting they mention technology as a threat as well because every time we think of technology we always take it as a plus. But technology has its threats as well for the educational establishment and for practitioners. What we have tried to cover in this unit is uh, some of the technologies that we think would have an impact in the role of an educator going forward. Um, we don't think this is the end of all of everything, um, but these are the three that we think would have a major impact in the role of an educator and also for learning providers as well. Just to start off, I will start with the one which I think would have the biggest impact and would be the biggest game changer, and that would be artificial intelligence in my view. Uh, we've always uh, reckoned that artificial intelligence will play a critical role in the development of technology in future but certainly for education it has a major impact as well. Um, in terms of case studies that we have showcased within this unit you will have uh, seen the Global Learning X Prize initiative that we have talked about. This is an initiative where there is a 15 million reward for any company that comes up with um, a piece of software that could run on any smart devices that would basically teach basic numeracy and literacy skills to primary level uh, learners and not just teach those learning skills but teach it at a better standard than what it is the national average. Um, now in theory what it means is that you know like machines could you know like learners could actually teach themselves basic numeracy and literacy without the need of a uh, tutor which is like brings us back to those um, initial thoughts and people were thinking would machines be teaching our students in future. Um, but this is one of the areas and you know like a lot of a couple of years ago that might have looked like as wishful thinking but it is something which is um, very much in existence. The prize is actually aiming to have something in place by 2019 um, and there are 135 uh, teams who are competing for this. Um, this is the same uh, initiative where they had initially they had the initiative for 10 million prize for the first private um, spacecraft to take human to space. Uh, that was one by, I think it was version, but again it's on the similar lines that we have looked at. Going forward we we have talked about some of the other um, case studies as well. Uh, one of them is a very interesting case study by Open University in UK, uh, where they are saying that they can identify 40% of learners uh, who would fail um, the courses before they even actually set foot or start their studying which is quite astonishing because essentially what we are saying with the base of these tools with artificial intelligence we can identify students who are failing which also gives us a chance to actually work with those learners as well. In fact they go on and say that you know, like by the end of week four they can identify 80% of the learners who would fail the course which is quite astonishing but again um, as one of the challenges laid down for the artificial uh, intelligence by Wolf and co, um, which is saying that you should have, um, artificial intelligence should have better understanding of system data and try to make judgments on that. Um, this is quite astonishing as well. Again, this is something which shows that machines would be playing a very key integral part in terms of, if not anything else, assisting our academics in delivering their qualification and identifying learners who are failing, who might not be doing very well or who might have special needs as well as part of the data that the machines can analyze. Um, and this would be something that I think the academics need to keep an eye on, to look at systems or be prepared to train on those systems that can assist them in terms of looking into their wider cohorts. We have also discussed about Google DeepMind, which is again um, a, a, a neural network which can basically allows you to like dictate to machine or to a software that you know, like go and learn this task and then perform it. 
They actually started that with an AlphaGo system, uh, which is a game, um, and they actually showcased how uh, learners uh, to actually allowed the neural network to learn that game and actually defeat the best player in the world in that. Now the same technology could be applied in a range of learning technology rules as well. I'll just move on to the others that we have talked about. We have talked about in, um, virtual reality, augmented reality, immersive virtual reality. Now, virtual reality has been in existence for a number of years. In fact, I can remember that I've worked on something like Second Life 10 years ago. But what has changed in the last year or so is the emergence of um, consumer affordable devices that have actually made the possibilities of this technology. We gave a case study of Dr. Shafi Mohammed, uh, Ahmed, sorry, who's a cancer surgeon. He actually live streamed his um, surgery. Now, the impact of it is quite good because essentially he's actually allowing every learner, everywhere, anywhere in the world, to come into the lecture theater virtually, roam around the lecture theater, see the different operators and so forth, and actually observe the surgery in a very close proximity as well. Now the same idea and the same principle could be applied in a range of different things. So for example, you could have experiments going on in CERN or different chemical experiment going on in labs which might be dangerous but people, learners could actually do that within the comfort of their homes as well. If there are experiments in in an international space center or they are, if in future there is a lab in Mars that you know, like we can, we can virtually enable our learners to go into those labs and perform those tasks as well. So quite lot of possibilities on that. We've talked about virtual school trips which are happening right now. In fact my very own kid actually goes through the tour of Colosseums and um, ancient Rome and Egypt through one of those devices. Um, we also talked about the physical uh, psychological be uh, benefits as well because you know, like there is a case study around how you can actually um, negate the impact of fear of public speaking. Uh, there are apps for that and it, there are other things that can be developed for a range of different psychological syndromes and deficiencies in people. Lastly, we've talked about 3D printing. Now, this might not have a direct impact in terms of how we teach in future, how it would be assisting, but it certainly has an impact on some of the traits that we teach our learners these days, especially around vocational learning and other areas. So, traditional arts like um, courses like um, bricklaying and construction and others. Imagine if there is a printer out there who is print, which is printing out 3D homes, then do we require the same, at least the same number of students doing some of the trades that are required in the built services? So it has a major impact in how we actually develop, especially in manufacturing as well, because the, the days of mass production prototype manufacturing, you don't need to have a big factory within has to, to develop something in mass. You can have a prototype developed through the 3D printer and if there is enough uh, buyers for it you could send it to companies in China to mass produce and that's how a lot of people are actually using these 3D printers to actually have that manufacturing input. We've talked about range of uh, application in arts, how this would develop as well in future. Um, you've talked about enable project and this is quite interesting. I think it's a good note to actually end this as well because it, what is actually allowing our learners is to put things into practice where you have high school students printing 3D arms, uh, bionic arms for um, people who need those. Um, quite fascinating to see how learners at such a young age are using technology to make a difference um, and also apply the learning, uh, application of learning in real world which is essentially what we want them to do as well. In the end, I hope you enjoyed this session and if you have enjoyed this course as well. This is the last week for this course um, and we hope you have actually found it very useful. We would very appreciate if you could actually put your feedback in the course survey at the end. Thank you very much.